What's up YouTube and welcome to my pickups video for the month of December 2019. Uh, this was a big month of travel for me and I was able to visit San Diego and Los Angeles uh, for about a week right around the Christmas season. So that was a nice getaway from the Midwest cold weather but also a great game hunting trip. Uh, I got a lot of import games this month and a lot of these were actually bought in person uh, with many of the stores out there in the LA area especially. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you one of the games I got on that trip. Uh, this is an upgrade for me to a very nice, clean, complete copy of Atomic Robo Kid for the Sega Genesis. Um, or as I like to call it, the robot trash can game, because that's what it kind of looks like. <laughs> this is a uh, interesting little manual scrolling shooter. Uh, it also came out on the Japanese PC Engine, and it's decent for an early Sega Genesis game if you keep that in mind, uh, but definitely not one you see very often in complete condition. So very happy to up upgrade that to a nice complete copy. Uh, another game I got off my long-term want list is this game for Sega CD, and this is Mickey Mania. Um, not normally something I would be interested in, but this is actually a big system-pushing uh, game. It really does drive the hardware, and they did a very nice job with the Sega CD version of this game in particular. Um, has some very interesting artwork to it. Uh, there's the first stage starts off in black and white as a tribute, tribute to the Steamboat Willie com uh, cartoon. And the reason I was holding off for a nice copy of this is this one comes with um, the ginormous poster uh, inside of it. And it seems like most of the copies out there are missing that. So very nice to have that game complete um, for my Sega CD collection. I got one other game for Sega Systems this month. This is for the Japanese Sega Saturn, and I got it on my trip. Uh, this is the Capcom Generations Part 1 collection, and this one has... Three of their early arcade shooters, 1942, 1943, and then the um, exclusive 1943 Kai, which only came out in arcades until this compilation. So very happy to get this. Um, I've had a couple of the other Generation Series releases before. I don't remember if I still even have them. I think I might have sold them off when I got some of the arcade boards for the games that are on them. But uh, this one, kind of starting over my collection with those and figure I might build it to get the full set of all five of those. Um, those did come out on the Saturn and the PS1 in Japan, so you can kind of get either version, whatever you prefer. Uh, another game I've been looking for for a very long time that I got off eBay very early in the month is this Japanese PC Engine shooter called Override. And this was developed by the Japanese company Sting, uh, but it was published by Data East. And uh, this is a very interesting system-pushing hardware game as well. Um, plays a lot like the Compile Shooters, if you're a fan of those. And uh, very, just very good quality, difficult game, nice long levels, interesting bosses. Um, plays at a very nice speed with no flicker or slowdown, which is pretty amazing for an early PC Engine game. I think this came out in 1990, um, and can definitely recommend it. It's not one of the easier uh, PC Engine shooters to find. Seems to fly pretty low on the radar, too, of people's awareness of it, but I can highly recommend this, and I'm glad um, I waited to get a nice clean copy of that, too. Uh, next, let's move on to some Sony systems. I got a lot of games for Sony systems this month. Uh, two of these were found in uh, two of the uh, Book Off USA locations that are out in the LA area. And the first one of these is a game that Jimmy Hoppe featured in one of his videos this past year that just instantly fascinated me. Um, it is called The Adventures of uh, Robin Lloyd. <laughs> and I believe it's more of like a adventure style detective game, but it has... Um, some very fantastic artwork in it, and honestly, just watching Jimmy play it in his video made me want this game. Uh, this does not go for a lot, and I'm sure it is a little bit language intensive, but I think I'll, I'm willing to fumble my way through it just to check out some of the cool artwork in this game. Um, I remember he likened it to kind of the art style of Tail Concerto, and I could easily agree with that, just, uh, just kind of the style of the artwork in the game. So very happy to get this, and like I said, it doesn't go for a whole lot, so if you're interested, um, easy one to pick up online. Another game I got at Book Off USA is uh, Nichibutsu Arcade Classics for the PS1. And this has uh, six of their early arcade titles, some of these that never came to a home version until now. So you get games like Moon Cresta, Crazy Climber, uh, Frisky Tom, the sequel Tom Strikes Back, uh, another shooter called SFX, which I haven't played yet, and then you also get uh, Crazy Climber 85, the quasi-sequel to Crazy Climber. So some interesting um, early arcade releases from this company that I've always been fond of. And again, this is an interesting compilation that you just don't see that often. So I was very happy to find that um, one of their stores. 
Next we'll move on to some PSP games. I got um, a few games for that system this month, but there's not one I buy for too often. Uh, first one of these is the Power Stone Collection. Um, I've owned Power Stone 1 and 2 on Dreamcast for many, many years, but I figured it'd be nice to have a portable version of those, and it kind of just proves once again that almost everything that was once exclusive to the Dreamcast is no longer exclusive because it got ported to so many other systems. So. Very weird that this came out on the PSP, uh, but there is this compilation that you can get uh, that has both of those games for much less money. Another game I got for PSP that's interested me for a while, this one has always kind of been a little bit pricey, um, and that is Sweet Fuse at Your Side. Um, I believe this is a visual novel game with some just kind of quirky characters, but uh, I believe it was one of the very late releases for the system. Uh, yeah, it says it came out in 2013, so I would think that this is probably one of the final releases that came out for the PSP. Maybe explains why it's a little bit difficult to get, uh, but I again, I found this out at a, a book-off location, decided to go ahead and grab it. Um, then we'll move on to some PS3 games. So the first one of these, I'm not going to lie, I was influenced by the recent GameSack video that talked about this game. Uh, it was completely off my radar. I had no idea this was a Japanese-developed title, so I was interested. It is, uh, it's got a very wordy title, so get bear with me here. Um, El Shaddai, Ascension of the Metatron. Did I get that right? I did. Um, <laughs> I don't know a whole lot about it other than it looks very visually interesting and I've noticed it's starting to climb in price, um, possibly due to the recent video, so I decided to go ahead and grab it uh, before it goes up even more and I'll explore it further uh, when I get some spare time. A couple other PS3 games I got just because a local store was having a $2 PS3 sale with some of their more common titles. Um, I picked up Deadpool and I know this game sold very well but I never really seemed to find it at a price that cheap so I decided to go ahead and get it. And then I also got uh, Yakuza Dead Souls, which is kind of a spin-off game from the series. I'm not a huge Yakuza fan, but i um, willing to give this a shot for, for two bucks. Might as well take a chance. Um, one final PS3 game I got. This was another book-off find in California. Uh, this was in McFly's most recent video, so if you haven't checked that out yet, you should. Uh, this is a PS3 game that was completely off my radar. I did not even know this existed. This is called Last Rebellion, and uh, early RPG, I believe, that was developed by Hitmaker of Japan. Um, probably not received all that well, but uh, I definitely don't see this game often. I did a search of all my local GameStop stores and nobody had it. So I figured uh, I'm just going to go ahead and pick that up and speculate on that because I don't think that's going to be easy to find in the future. Um, I did get a new release for PS4 this month. This was one that I pre-ordered from Amazon Japan. Came once again very, very quickly. I'm very happy with their service. Um, if you're interested in getting some new release import games, I hate to give business to Amazon because I don't buy from their U.S. site very often, but their Japanese site has really been very uh, efficient and affordable uh, for some of these new releases. This is uh, one I've been waiting for for a very long time. Uh, this is Esprayed Sai, and this is a release of the 1998 Cave arcade game coming home for the very first time 21 years later. <laughs> Um, I did not get the limited edition version. There's a fancier version of this. It comes with some alternate artwork and some arcade trinkets and things like that in the box. Uh, but I am very happy to get this. I've been playing it a lot. Um, I highly recommend it if you like cave shooters. And I think that this is um, a great release for the PS4, so I'm happy to support it. Um, it did come with one other goodie with it, which is a kind of thin, but it did come with an art book. Um, decent size. And you can see this is part of the uh, M2 Shop Trigger series that they've been doing several of these arcade ports uh, to home many, many years after the original arcade games. So, again, happy to support these and hope more, more people do. I think that this is a very cool series of releases, and hopefully we'll get more of these physically, just like this one. Um, I don't know if we're going to get a U.S. limited run version of that game, but I figured I'm not even going to chance it and wait. I think that's one that's worth getting first day, uh, no question about it. All right, uh, so next we're going to move on to probably my biggest purchase of the month and one that I've wanted for a very, very long time. Um, I am a firm believer that the holiday season should always be about getting new game hardware, and I like to treat myself to something new console-related every year or portable system-related that I don't have. So this year, I decided to go ahead and spring for a system I've been wanting for a long time. Um, this is a Japanese exclusive system. This is the Neo Geo CD-Z. So if you're familiar with the Neo Geo CD, this is the final revision of the system. Um, comes with a little bit more compact casing, looks a little bit different than the original Neo Geo top loader or front loader systems. But the big reason I wanted this version of the system is this, uh, the Neo Geo CD is known for very long load times. And this one has a little extra memory on board, which allows the games to load in about half the time that they do on the earlier versions, which actually gets it down to a reasonable amount of time for most releases. Um, very, very happy with this hardware. It has a nice uh, heavy feel to it. It's got some just 
smooth buttons, things like that. Um, it does have a few different hookup options on the back there you can check out. Um, I am currently waiting on an RGB cable um, to plug into this. Some guy is custom making me one, so I've just been playing it with the composite cables for now, uh, which obviously doesn't look its best, but once I get the RGB cable in, in, um, in I will be able to play it properly and uh, really looking forward to it. Um, also want to give a shout out to the controller for the Neo Geo CD. It has this just very nice clicky joystick on it and um, just very comfortable to hold. I think it's one of the greatest controllers probably released for a home system, uh, thinking about the earlier gen systems. So what good would new hardware be without some games? Um, I've gone on kind of a game buying spree for that system. Unfortunately, Neo Geo CD games are not the easiest thing to find, but they are much, much cheaper than their AES counterparts, which is one of the reasons I decided to go for that for my Neo Geo home system for now. Uh, first one of these I got is a shooter. This is Sonic Wings 2. Um, I have played the uh, original Aero Fighters on Super Nintendo, which is part of the same series. So looking forward to checking out how uh, this one is upgraded. I've actually been waiting to get that cable to try this one out. Uh, another shooter I got is Viewpoint. I own this on a few other systems like the Sega Genesis and the Sony PlayStation. But I think that this would probably be the ultimate version. Uh, all the other versions seem to have had their own compromises. So definitely looking forward to playing the upgraded version of Viewpoint. Um, another game I checked out that I'd never really explored before, but I saw some video of it and it interested me, is Mutation Nation. Um, this is an early beat-em-up for the system and actually plays very, very well. Um, I have been playing this one and just really enjoying it overall. I think this is a, a recommended title for the system. Um, probably the biggest game I bought so far is the shooter that I absolutely knew I wanted in my collection. This is Polestar. Uh, this is considered kind of a new R-Type release um, that was heavily influenced by the R-Type games of the 80s. Um, very, very good graphics in this. Uh, nice sound, just plays very well. It is hard as nails, I will say that, <laughs> and I'm struggling to get very far in it, um, but I'm definitely enjoying the ride. So once again I get that cable, uh, this game will look its best and we'll be able to get a lot farther in it, I'm sure. Um, I did get two games that came packed in with the system. These aren't really anything that I was super excited to get, but they were um, just common releases and fighting games that the SNK had plenty of. Um, so this is the original Samurai Spirits, or Sh Samurai Showdown. And then uh, I believe this is Real Bout Fatal Fury Part 3. So again, uh, nice artwork on those, but not necessarily something I'm going to be playing all the time. So um, I will say that system is a very high focus for me right now. You'll probably be seeing me get many more games for it in the coming month or two, um, just while I'm kind of excited on it and uh, getting some of the games for a system I never had before. All right, uh, let's move on to some Nintendo systems. So I actually got a game for the NES this month, which is weird because I have a complete license set with the exception of um, Stadium Events, and I have most of the unlicensed games already, but there was one of the unlicensed games that I still needed one of the variants of, and I happened to find that this month. Um, this game is not good, so please don't get too excited, but this, <laughs> the artwork and everything is also not very good. Uh, this is Impossible Mission 2, and this is the original SEI uh, publisher variant of it. So it has this very bland label on it that's already smeared to just from very poor ink. Um, but I decided to show the other two versions of it just so you can kind of compare. Um, so this is the one that's kind of the, the hybrid version. Uh, this is the Epix SEI version. And I believe it's branded by Epix because it was originally a PC game um, by, by Epix. Um, so this one has a little bit better artwork, but it's still not very good. And it was... Um, Again, put out by SEI, but again, just for some reason, different artwork. Uh, the cartridge shape is essentially the same for this one as well. And then probably the more common version of this game was put out by this company, uh, which was made a lot of unlicensed releases, um, American Video Entertainment. And they actually put a little effort into it and released a full color label for it. Uh, but the game itself is exactly the same. So uh, to have the sets, you need all three versions. And I guess I now do. So I'm kind of excited. To have something new for my NES collection, probably a system I haven't bought anything new for in two, three years, um, just due to how complete my set is for that. So let's move on to some other Nintendo games I got this month. Uh, this was another exciting find on that California trip. Um, this is a shooter for the Japanese Game Boy that I've been very interested in. And I am going to butcher the pronunciation of this because it has a very weird title that actually doesn't fall in, uh, into Japanese naming convention whatsoever, as where well as the language goes. So this is called uh, Vattle Juicy, or 
Glucy, I have no idea how to say this, <laughs> and I can't tell if it's an L or an I, uh, but it is a very ambitious shooter for the original Game Boy uh, by a company called IGS, who also did some shooters on the PC Engine. And I can highly recommend this game if you're interested in having a shooter um, for your GB that did not come out here. Uh, the regular levels actually play at a very slow pace, but it does have some nice features in that there's three different selectable ships, which is pretty unheard of for its time. Um, it has an interesting dodge function that you can push a button and your plane will dip to avoid enemy fire for momentarily. And then the once you get to the mid-bosses and the bosses, the scrolling of the game like triples in speed, and the boss fights are very, very fun and uh, interesting in this game. So I, I don't know what uh, really possessed them to put so much energy into this game for an early Game Boy release, but it is well done. I um, could definitely recommend that. Another game I got on that trip um, is another uh, Nintendo Portable release that I've been wanting for a very, very long time. And this I got at uh, a store called Retro Game Camp in uh, Little Tokyo um, of L.A. And it's a store that actually has a location in Akih Akihabara as well. Um, so this is their U.S. location that primarily sells all Japanese import games. Um, I was very in heaven at this location, and I'm also planning on doing a video separately of some of this uh, game hunting that I'd done on the trip, but I wanted to show this game that I found there and was very happy to get it. Uh, this is known as Guru Laji Champ, and this is a, the very last game that the developer Compile ever released. Um, I am a huge Compile fan, and I like just about all of their early games that they put out. Um, this one is actually an action puzzle game, and I've been watching videos of this on YouTube for years, always interested in it. It is very expensive for a Japanese Game Boy Advance game, uh, but it was well worth it, especially to find it in person, and they had a better price than I've ever seen online for it. So can highly recommend um, Game Camp in L.A. If you're ever around, definitely check that store out. Uh, but this was a very happy, happy find, and the store owners were very excited that I actually knew what it was and <laughs> was uh, able to talk about the game and just kind of what it meant to me. So very fun uh, time at that store. Uh, another game I got on the trip, nowhere near as interesting, is Tin Can Escape for the Nintendo DS. Um, I am sure this is complete shovelware, but I had never seen it before, and I decided to take a chance because it was like two bucks. Um, I like buying these weird DS games that are just well off the radar. I have no idea if this will ever um, turn into anything rare in the future, but I decided to go ahead and grab it just because it was very low risk. Uh, let's see, we're kind of getting down to it. That is the last game I bought this month, but I did get some other things. So the first one of these I got on that trip also is a box for the PS Vita with the original manual in it. And I have a Vita 2000 system, which is this is the box for, um, but I bought mine used and it just came loose. Um, so I was happy to get the original system box for this that I can match up to that, um, just kind of help complete that system. Another thing I found locally um, here in my home base is this uh, interesting Nintendo uh, NES carry tray. So it has a storage for about 10 games. It's called the Docking Bay 10, and it was by this company called Suncom. Um, but it is a very high quality tray, and I thought it had this just interesting like roll top lid. Um, so I decided to go ahead and grab it. They also made one of these that was um, a 20 cartridge tray, so it was twice as wide, just the same depth. And um, I've never seen one of those in person either. So just got this at my local half price books and decided to grab it because it was something I'd never seen before. Uh, the very last thing I got this month is magazines, and as you know, I like to buy video game magazines, so I got a few more for my collection this month. Uh, first couple of these are issues of Tips and Tricks magazines, which um, initially on the surface, they're not that interesting because they're just loaded with cheat codes and things like that you don't really need. But I will say the editors of this magazine were big um, Japan game fans and also just had some interesting things to say in the margins of the magazine. And this is the issue they made for Bloody Roar. Um, I also have to think, I think it's pretty interesting they did an issue with Bloody Roar on the cover because this is a pretty obscure fighting game for the Japanese PS1 and then eventually the US PS1 um, that they decided to feature on the cover. So uh, these are interesting. They don't take very long to read just because there's so much tip-related content in them, but the sidebars are well worth checking out. And then I also got the Tekken 3 issue, which came out a few months later. So these are both from about 1998, I believe. Um, a magazine I got this month that I had never heard of or seen before. I got this one off eBay. This is a magazine called High End. <laughs> and it was um, intended to be for the more upscale video game buyer of around 1992 era. 
Uh, very, very thin magazine, doesn't have a whole lot to it, but the coverage in here actually is pretty interesting. They did feature uh, the Japanese PC Engine and uh, Turbo Duo very heavily in this. Um, there's about four pages of reviews for PC Engine games in this, uh, which is something you typically would not have seen in a U.S. magazine at the time. Maybe just a blurb here or there, but not this level of coverage. I don't think the writing in this is anything to write home about, but it is interesting that they tried to go for a, a little bit different market. Um, they only made four of these before the, the whole thing stopped, and I think this was the last issue. So I'm probably going to go ahead and try to get the full set of these just to see what else is in them. Uh, but it's, it's just cool to find another magazine that I wasn't even aware of existed. Uh, the last thing I got for magazine-wise was another game fan issue. I'm getting very close to completing the set of those. This is one of the... Uh, Volume 1 issues that I still needed, and it has this very cool Zombies Ate My Neighbors cover on it, which is a game that I owned um, in my childhood, and probably would have bought this issue first thing on the newsstand had I seen it back then. Uh, very happy to get this in my collection, it's in great condition, and it gets me just a little bit closer to getting the full set of all the game fans. So that is about it uh, for the month. It was a pretty action-packed month for game finds, and I uh, hope everyone had a great holiday season. Please take a moment, like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you think, and I will talk to you soon. Have a great day or night, wherever you are.